In this section, what we're going to do is add a complete Drupal site to version control. Now, we're going to talk a bit more about version control and give you some background if you don't have that already. And we'll also talk more about the command line. But it's really exciting to get a site on version control for the first time. So I want to go ahead and do that before we move on to the conceptual stuff behind version control. So what I'm going to do is navigate to a website where I've installed just a default Drupal 7 installation. I have downloaded Drupal 7.7. .7. Now this is one version back from current, which is 7.8. But we're using an older version just so we can go through the upgrade process in later videos. Now if you'd like, you can do the rest of this series on an existing Drupal site. But because we're going to be modifying files, we'll be adding some dummy modules, you may want to create a fresh Drupal installation in order to practice on, so you don't accidentally make modifications that you're not able to roll back easily. So my site is going to be on loc.getsite.com, and if we go ahead and open up this folder, you'll see that we have just a default Drupal installation. Now, we need to get to this place on the command line. So I'm going to jump to the command line. I'm going to hit command K, which will clear the back scroll, which is everything that has previously been printed out on the screen. So we have a fresh command line here. Now when we're on the command line, we're always within a particular directory in the file system. And we can find out what directory that is by typing PWD, which is short for print working directory. I hit enter and it says that we're in users slash Chris Shattuck. Now, this isn't where the website is that I want to add a version control, so I need to change the directory by typing cd and then the name of the directory. I know that it's at chriswebsites.loc.getsite.com, and you may have noticed that some of the text I was typing was automatically completed, and I was able to do that by pressing tab. And when you press tab, it will auto-complete anything that you're typing in. I'm going to hit enter. And now we're in the directory. So if I do PWD again, we get the name of the directory that we're in. Just to make sure, I'm going to type ls, which will list the files in our directory. And you can see that we have all of the files that exist in a default Drupal installation. So we should be good to go here. There are three steps we need to take in order to get our site into a Git repository. The first is to initialize a repository or create the repository. The second, is to add all of the files in our site to the repository. And the third is to make a commit. Now, we'll come back to all of those things in detail in just a minute. But let's go ahead and start at the beginning, which is initializing a repository. So I'm going to go ahead and type git init. And you see we have a line that says initialized empty git repository in Chris websites look gitsite.com. And then it says slash dot git. Now this is a new folder that got created when we initialized the repository, and we'll come back to that folder in a bit. But for now, suffice it to say that this is the folder where all of our git information is stored. Now let's say we want to learn a little bit more about git init. What we can use is a command called help. So I'm gonna go ahead and type in a command git help init. So what this says is that we're running the git program, we're running the help command, and we're passing init as a parameter to this command because we want to learn more about it. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And this will open up the git manual so we can learn more about it. And I can use the arrow keys to go down or up. I can use space to jump down a full page. And if I want to exit out of this, I can type Q and that jumps me out. Using help is a great way to understand what you're doing throughout this process. So even if we don't take the time to open up the help file and read, you might still consider pausing the video and doing that for every new command that you see. You might end up finding some really interesting features in Git that way. Let's look at one more command before we add all of the files to our repository. I'm going to go ahead and type git status, and this will give us information about our repository. Now you see we have a lot of red. These are all files that have not been added to the repository. Now I'm scrolling up and you can see that we actually have a lot of back scroll. We have some of the help that we saw earlier. And then right here is where we get to the git status command. And so everything below this is what happened after we ran that command. 
So first it says on branch master, we'll get to branches in a bit, initial commit, and then it has a list of untracked files and actually tells us how to add individual files, which is a logical next step. And then everything in red are all files that haven't been added to the repository. And you see not only files, but folders listed here as well, includes, miss modules, and so on. Let's go ahead and add all of our files in. I'm gonna do so by using the add command, and then I'm using a dot to indicate that we wanna add everything in this directory. We didn't get any feedback, we just get jumped to an empty command line afterwards. But if we type git status again, we see all of these green files, which are all files that have been added. Now, while we call them added at this point, they actually haven't been committed to the repository, so we haven't added them to version control yet. This is kind of a middle area where we decide what we're going to do when we're gonna commit. So we're going to use the git commit command in order to actually add it to our repository. We're going to add a parameter, and we're doing so by doing dash m, and then adding our message, so dash m is short for message, and we'll go ahead and call it first commit, and I'm gonna hit enter. So if you're following along, congratulations, because you've just added your first website to version control. What this means right away is that if you begin making modifications to this code base, you can roll back to this snapshot that we just took of your code base, or compare any changes that you make to this snapshot. If we do a git status now, you see that we have nothing to commit. Our working directory is clean, which means we're good to go. Now if we step back up to the command that we use, git commit, and we're curious what that dash m meant, and you'll see these additional parameters often, you can just do git help commit, and if you scroll down, you'll see a list of options here. And we can continue scrolling down until we get to the dash M, which is right here. It says message, and here's the long version of it. And it says use the given message as a commit message. Okay, I'm gonna hit Q to exit out of that. 